How you doing there folks? Baders here with another video for you all. Today we're going to be looking at 50 secret tips and tricks you might not know about Red Dead Redemption 2. Now you may know some of these. Heck, you may even know more than some. But hopefully there's a fair amount on this list that'll just make you go, Jeepers Creepers. That's interesting. So go ahead and butter up your butt cheeks and let's get to average baiting, baby! Did you know that you can enter in dual mode anytime you want? Yeah. Maybe someone in town was spreading false rumors about your abnormally large nipples and you want to put those rumors to rest. Well, all you have to do is gently and slowly push down on the trigger button or the R2 button if you're on PlayStation. Talk about my freaky nipples. Come on, I dare ya. I double dare ya. Let it be known, people. My gargantuan nipples are not up for discussion, okay? You hear me, Eddie? Yeah, you better run. Now, one of the coolest features new to this Red Dead is that the whole game can be played in first person. The guns look amazing, and it's great to see the world from that first person perspective. However, some of you might not know that while you're in first person, you can actually look down the sights. Oh yeah, that's right. You can look down the sights of your gun by pushing down on the D-pad while you're aimed in. Now, seeing the gun is nice, but aiming down the sights is super immersive. Now, are you tired of pushing start then selecting the map every time you want to see a new waypoint? Well, never fear, because you can cut out that step by just holding down on the start button. <laughs> yes, sweet! This will cause the map to come up right away and boom! You're good to go do all sorts of creepy map stuff or whatever. What's the one thing every gunfighter does besides shooting people in the face? Cool spinny tricks with their handgun, right? Yeah. Well, now you can be just like your favorite Western heroes when you holster a single handgun. Just double tap L1 if you're on the PlayStation or left bumper if you're on the Xbox, and you'll put your gun away with some pizzazz. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Sometimes it can be good to let people know you're serious, especially when they're laughing at you uncontrollably because you're wearing ladies' underwear over your pants. Well, now you can give people and animals a bit of a scare, or intimidate them by firing a warning shot up in the air. To do this, just push up on the D-pad when you're aimed with your gun, then pull the trigger. This is also a great way to scare some birds out of some bushes for hunting, or if you just like scaring birds. I think we can all agree it can be a bit annoying to continually go into the progress tab in the start menu to see what you need to do or what you have done in certain tasks. Well, there is an easier way to access your task list, hunting challenges, etc. All you gotta do is tap left on the D-pad and bada bing, bada boom, you got some tasks to look at. Easy peasy, penis squeezy. Now, if you're like me and you're not sure how much money you have because you're, you're a bit of a binge spender, or what time of the day it is because it doesn't show anywhere on the HUD, well, don't worry. All you have to do is just push down on the D-pad and boom! All your questions will be answered, and then some. You even get the temperature, which I think is kind of cool. So you know if your nips are going to be a bit perky. <laughs> Now, there is a way to be better at riding and running in the game as well. If you time your gallops with when you press X or A, depending on which console you're on, then your horse or Arthur won't lose as much stamina when running. This is incredibly useful when racing or running from the popo. So don't just mash down on the button like a lunatic. Strategize a little and your character and your horse will be more efficient. Now, if you're a trigger-happy lunatic when you're hunting and you're getting a little frustrated that every time you kill that perfect animal, they turn out to be in poor condition before you skin them because you shot them 30 times in the nipples, well, you're in luck. Because you can actually hunt medium-sized game with nothing but a lasso and a knife. Just grab the animal with the lasso and just get in close and then stab him right in the face! The pelt won't lose any of its value, so this can be a great substitute. This doesn't work on small game because they can slip out of the lasso, and it doesn't work on big game because they're just too big and strong. They clearly lift, bro. Now, sometimes you'll commit a crime in Red Dead, and that weird guy with the droopy eye will be gawking at your goodies because he doesn't know how not to be a creepy weirdo. So you'll have yourself a witness. 
and we both know that Efron doesn't know how to keep a secret. However, shooting good old Efron in the face is gonna take a hit on your honor level for the worse. Because Efron's got kids and a dog named Tinkerbell. So that puts you in a real predicament if you don't want your soul to be immorally scarred. However, you can lasso a witness to silence them without losing any honor. However, shooting them in the face while they're tied up will still lose you a bit of honor. Thought you'd get away from me, huh? And tell your cop buddies on me, did you? <laughs> Not today! Alright, I might have let that one get away from me a bit. Now, when you are hunting and looking for perfect pelts, it can be kind of wasteful murdering all the crummy animals only to find out they aren't good enough for your collection. Well, before you go murdering animals, you can actually find out their condition right next to their name while they're highlighted. This can be done by aiming at the animal with a gun, using binoculars, or eagle eye if you know the animal. I mean, not like no no the animal it's not like you guys like hang out but if you know what type of animal it is like if you've already done the research i guess a star rating will show up next to the name of the animal in question one star means it's poor whereas three stars means it's perfect but remember you can ruin the star rating by shooting the animal too many times so be careful with that now if your horse is what we in the business call a bit of a runner or maybe it gets a little curious mid-gunfight and comes frolicking out of nowhere just to get shot in the head, then you might be getting a little frustrated. Well, know that there's a way to actually prevent this. You can actually hitch your horse anywhere, regardless if there's a hitch post or not. That way, your horse is going nowhere, okay? Nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. Just hold Y or triangle, depending on your console, and you'll hitch your horse to a tree nearby, or worst case scenario, the ground. Either way, this bad boy is going nowhere. Now here's a fun little tip for those physically aggressive individuals who really like to put a hurting on the randos in the game. You can actually tackle anyone to the ground by running into someone and pressing Y or triangle, depending on your console. This will take them to the ground MMA style, and then you can sort of judo kick them in the face or whatever people do on the ground i don't know that'll teach them to just be standing there and minding their own business won't it did you know that you can actually sell a legendary buck antlers for a trinket that improves the quality of pelts of all the animals you skin in the future this is super helpful if you want to collect a lot of perfect pelts it actually improves them by one star rating making good pelts perfect pelts. This is one of those trinkets that's basically a must-have if you want to make all the legendary clothing items at the trappers. Now have you ever been without your horse stranded in a place you barely know with nothing but four dollars and a wet dream in your pants? Well, I have. And if you're like me, you know that it can be frustrating getting around without any means of transportation or fast travel. Well, there is good news, though. In Red Dead Redemption 2, if you're without transportation, you can just call out to a stranger who's got a sweet ride and ask them to bum a ride. More often than not, they'll be more than obliged to just let you ride along with them to their destination because they're painfully lonely. Try to refrain from blowing in their ear, though, the whole trip. Although it's kind of sexy, it's also super socially unacceptable, okay? You gotta butter them up first before the ear blow. And has looting cupboards got you down because you're constantly mashing buttons and holding them down? Well, fret not, because Baders has got another trick to speed up the process. Now, if you hold down square or X while looting a given cupboard, Arthur will just keep grabbing things until there's nothing left to grab. I mean, it beats pushing the button down more than once. Am I right, fellas? Am I right? <laughs> Did you know that you can also have a consensual sexual relationship with a billy goat in this game? This isn't actually a thing that Rockstar made possible, but it's what some of us might call a fantasy. Soon Gunther will be together. Soon. Are dead animals just floating away from you downstream and all that good eating is just slowly bobbing its way to oblivion? Well, don't worry, because you can actually use your lasso to grab dead animals in the water and pull them towards you using the right trigger. This way, even dead wet ones will succumb to your wrath. Come over here, you slippery catatonic escapist. I want to put you in my mouth. 
Now we all know that robbing trains in Red Dead Redemption can be lucrative. You can get a couple hundred dollars by sticking the business end of your gun right in the faces of the traveling pedestrians. However, the real score is in the safes at the back of the train. But how do I get in them, you might be wondering. Well, just walk up to the safe with your dynamite equipped and push R2 or right trigger and you'll actually place the dynamite on the safe. Then, just light the fuse or shoot it and voila! instant satisfaction. Eagle Eye can be used for more than just hunting. That's right. It can be used to find points of interest, items, plants, all sorts of things, okay? So it's a good idea to use it inside houses to find points of interest. The good news is you can use it as much as you like so it makes looting and harvesting easier. Just hit R3 and L3 at the same time as frequently as possible and you'll be glad you did because it's kind of just fun pushing those two buttons at the same time, you know? Oh, yes. 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 Anyways. Now, hog tying someone can be a bit of a chore. First, you have to chase after them, usually screaming something like, I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! Get over here, you! I'm gonna get you! I am gonna get you! You just keep screaming that over and over again until you finally do catch them. Then you gotta get close and hog tie them. But wait, there is an easier way. If you punch someone while the lasso is equipped, it will instantly hogtie them, eliminating the chase. Unless you enjoy the chase as much as this psycho. Come here, you! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Yeah, you better run! Woo! Yeah, I'm gonna tie you up and smack your butt cheeks together! Woo! Yeah! Oh, yes! I think that guy enjoys the chase a little too much. There are secret rooms in the game, some of which are indicated by a metal door in a place of business. If you do a little reconnaissance, then you'll actually be able to rob the hidden establishment. For instance, in Valentine, behind the doctor's office, if you peer into the window like a creepy pervert, then the next time you try to rob the doctor's office, you'll be given an option to rob the back room. Which is fun and more lucrative than just robbing poor old doctor whatever his name is. Do you feel that Arthur is tired? Maybe he needs to take a load off, but there doesn't appear to be anywhere to do so, right? Wrong! Your character can rest literally anywhere in the game just by holding down triangle or Y depending on the console you're playing on. It's perfect for those people who just can't muster the strength to hit a button even one more time. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not ambidextrous. So when I aim in third person and it focuses over the wrong shoulder, I start to freak out a little bit mentally. Well, no need to worry because Rockstar lets you control which shoulder you peer over for the most part. If you find your camera is over the wrong shoulder, just push left on the D-pad and it will switch over to the other shoulder. <laughs> yes, super neat, right? Now Red Dead 2 is all about realism, so the devil really is in the details with this game. For instance, did you know that a full mass are better for nefarious activities than just a banana? I meant to say bandana, but I said banana, which obviously a full mask is better than a banana. You know what I mean? Like, I guess if you had like a really big banana and you held it in front of your face and you were like, GIVE ME THE MONEY! <laughs> they were like, okay, Mr. Banana Man, here's the money. But what I was trying to say was bandana, but I said banana. It's a bit of a confusion, really. But yes, for instance, the full masks are actually better for nefarious activities than a banana or a bandana. It makes sense, right? God, I screwed this one up, didn't I? They're definitely not going to recognize you, you know, coming through town if you're wearing a severed pig's head, okay? It leaves a lot of mystery there. This means you'll be less likely to get a bounty while wearing a mask, and it's easier to escape the authorities upon removing it in the clear, you know? It's definitely more effective than robbing someone holding a banana in front of your face and then leaving and throwing the banana at them as you go, Ah! That guy just robbed me holding a banana! Now, one of the best slash worst features to cross over from Red Dead 1 to Red Dead 2 is the auto-reload in Deadeye. This is a double-edged sword because, on the one hand, if you need to reload your guns, especially dual revolvers, the reload animation can be a bit time-consuming. Hit Deadeye and boom, you're fully cocked, locked, and ready to rock. However, be careful doing challenges with Deadeye, especially ones where you can't reload your gun because it will actually hinder your progress. Deadeye is still pretty awesome for gunfights though. I do have to admit that. Now hunting big game can be a bit of a bummer in Red Dead 2, only being able to store one big pelt on your horse at a time. Well, why not just bring more horses, right? Did you know that you can actually tame another wild horse to follow you around 
to give you more storage space when you're hunting big game. That's right, all you have to do is tame a wild horse, highlight it, and then tell it to follow you. Then whenever you kill a big game, you can put it on the other horse, then kill another big game and put it on your horse. It's win, 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 win. Now the weapons in Red Dead are incredible and look even better upon customization. However, there are some rare weapons in the game that can be found throughout the world or on missions. So keep your eyes out because more often than not, you'll only get one chance to acquire them. And boy oh, some of these weapons look finger licking delicious, so they're worth being found. That's right, these are secret weapons in the game that you have to keep your eyes out for. And just like the weapons, there are also rare articles of clothing that are scattered around the map that look completely unique. Now most are hats or masks, but they all look awesome in the game. Again, these special items can be found in the world space, so be sure to keep your eyeballs open, especially when you're in a unique location off the beaten trail. I don't know about you guys, but the first question on my mind when I was playing Red Dead and I was walking around with a crummy hat and I saw someone else with an awesome hat, I thought, boy, do I wish I could beat that NPC to death and prance around in that stolen hat. Well, guess what? You can. Now, if you see an NPC wearing a hat in Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll be able to steal their hat by killing them or just knocking them out. Just walk over to the hat, press and hold the square button or X if you're on Xbox One, and Arthur will automatically pick it up and put it on his head. However, you can't keep all stolen hats forever. There are only a few stolen hats in the game that will permanently be kept in your inventory in Red Dead Redemption 2, and you can identify them by their white glow when they are on the ground. Just like your base hat will glow white when it's on the ground. Whenever an NPC's hat falls onto the ground, take a closer look at it to see if it has a glow. If it does, that means it's a unique hat and will be added to your inventory once you pick it up. Now most unique hats are named as well, so you can actually check if it has a name in the bottom right corner of your screen to determine whether it's a unique one. For non-unique stolen hats, if it gets shot off your head or knocked off for whatever reason, you'll need to find it on the ground and pick it back up if you want to keep it. Once it's lost, it'll probably be lost forever until you find another NPC with the same hat. Bummer, I know. Now, if you ever do lose one of your saved hats, you can just strut your butthole over to your horse and you'll be able to retrieve it. Also, you can store up to five different hats on your horse and access them at any given time. This will let you change up your look on the fly depending on where your character is. Obviously, certain hats seem more suitable for certain climates. Might look like a weirdo in the desert wearing a bear fur hat. Boy, is it hotter than tits out here! I have half a mind to take off this sleeping bag I got wrapped around my face. Half a mind. Half a mind. Now fishing is a pastime that you've got to have some patience for, at least if you decide to do it above board. Now if you're like me though, and you just can't wait to have that salmon decomposing in your gunt, well then pull out your revolver and shoot the ugly right off that little fish's face. That's right, you can shoot fish if you're not in the mood to wait for a bite. Dynamite also works if you're really impatient. Boy, are we gonna get some good eating tonight, fellas? <laughs> I just blew up all them salmon. Now, crafting can be a pretty important part of the game, especially if you want to acquire unique ammo types like explosive rounds or poison arrows. However, you'll have to do it one arrow at a time or one bullet at a time. However, you can speed up the crafting process pretty easy. Just hold down X or A to continually craft ammunition at the campfire or on your horse. It skips most of the animation. Also, do note that you can easily craft split point bullets for all your weapons and they do more damage. Now, aiming at times can be a bit overrated and not surprising there are even some advantages in Red Dead 2 to give the aiming thing a rest every now and again. If you decide not to aim your weapon with L2 or left trigger, you can actually fire from the hip and fan a revolver by tapping right trigger or R2, which looks so cool it makes all the dames in the land wet in their old fashioned underwears. However, this is a bit more inaccurate, but it is super fast, it's useful, and it also looks really cool. And sometimes you gotta sacrifice practicality just to look cool. Because looking practical is how you end up alone eating peaches in a poorly lit shack married to a scarecrow named Dolores. More peaches, Dolores? Okay, God! No need to yell! More for me, I guess. Is your horse nowhere near you? Butternuts! Butternuts! Oh, dear Lord. Where did Butternuts run off to now? 
No worries, because all you gotta do is just save your game and reload it, and Buttercup, or Butternuts, or whatever her name is, will be within earshot yet again. Now, sometimes playing dress-up won't fool the people that you're robbing at gunpoint. Wearing a mask, or a bandana, or a banana, will not always conceal your identity, and people will still recognize your clothing if you've done things for them in the past, or greeted them wearing that very outfit before. It's best to have a unique outfit for nefarious deeds that you only wear when you're being a naughty boy. And here's a fun fact, just like your hats and masks, you can even store multiple outfits on your horse in their entirety and change looks on the fly. So if you're doing a lot of exploring, it can be a good idea to have an outfit for warm climates and one for chilly ones so that Arthur doesn't freeze off his fuzzy peaches. Now, as most of you are aware, your hair grows in Red Dead Redemption 2, meaning you can't just go to the barber and get the mustache that you think's gonna save your marriage. You have to wait for it to grow. This can be rather time-consuming if you want to have a longer look. Although Rockstar doesn't let you skip the growth process, they do let you speed it up. This can be done with the use of hair tonics. Hair tonics actually double the growth rate, and they are stackable. That means the first time you use it, it's two times, the next time it's four times, the next time it's eight times, and so forth. So binge on them and then sleep a bunch, and before you know it, you'll have a big old mame of hair that'd make Cousin It seem well-groomed. Now, hair tonics definitely have some pros and cons. Now, the biggest concern, however, can be how long they last. Because you don't just want to be cutting your hair every five seconds after you overindulge on 12 bottles or whatever. The good news is, is hair tonics only last up to two stages of hair growth. So if you're at stage one, you'll actually need to take at least five tonic hits to get that bushy tenor of beard hair, you know? It can also be helpful to note that your hair will only grow one increment at a time, no matter how long you play, before needing a screen fade to grow further. Screen fades include sleeping, respawning, fast travel, cutscenes, etc. Furthermore, hair pomade applied by a barber lasts five in-game days, and it only lasts two in-game days if you apply it yourself. Because let's face it, you don't have the proper training required to really get down to the roots. You need those slippery barber fingers for that, I'm afraid. Now, is shooting someone from 20 feet away just not unique or personal enough for you? Well, you're in luck, because you can actually do unique execution animations by going up to an unsuspecting rando with your weapon drawn and pressing right trigger or R2. It will activate a sweet kill shot animation, and boy oh boy are these animations violent. Now, have you ever tried to grow out that beefy homeless beard only to be stuck at stage 7 and wondered why the beard gods aren't smiling on you? Well, don't worry, because as a matter of fact, beards stop growing at stage 7. So you will actually have to use hair tonics to make them grow longer. So if you want a beard that will make any mountain man jelly, stock up on those hair tonics. Are you tired of your owned horse named Slippery Nipples because people keep laughing at you when you cry out to him in the dark? But you don't have enough funds to get yourself a new mare? Well, that's okay, because you can still tame wild horses just like you could in the previous game. However, it's a bit harder not to get bucked off. So go ahead and get ready for a wild ride. Once you tame the horse, you can stable it or saddle it and start creating a real bond. You know, the kind of bond that scare most decent folk. You know, the kind of bond where you feed each other chocolate strawberries in the moonlight. Now, the long arm of the law isn't actually everywhere in Red Dead Redemption 2. Off the beaten trail for one, but even certain towns don't have any law in them. Meaning you can rob, steal, kill, and pillage without getting a bounty. I'm not even sure what pillage really means, but it sure does sound nefarious. I once pillaged on an old lady so hard, she farted. True story. However, do be warned that these towns don't have any law for a reason. They're filled to the brim with baddies who will be sure to end your pillaging frenzy in a hurry with a bullet to the face. And there's a lot of them, so just be ready for it, you know? Another interesting fact about Red Dead Redemption 2 is that carry capacity isn't tied to given items. Rather, owning items just unlock more in terms of capacity. Buying satchels and bullet belts that carry more will permanently increase your carrying capacity regardless which satchel or gun belt you're actually wearing, so be sure to stock up on all the good stuff regardless of the cosmetics. 
Also, the bandolier you can wear or not wear, and you'll still get the ammo bonus associated with shotguns and rifles. So keep that in mind. Now, all the clocks in Red Dead 2 tell accurate time in-game. But even above and beyond that, a great way to further immerse yourself in the world is to buy your own pocket watch and just check the time like a boss. You can equip a pocket watch if you own one in your satchel to see the time, which is pretty immersive. Have you ever got yourself in a wiener measuring competition only to find yourself outside at 3 in the morning about to throw down with the town drunk over who's got the bigger berries? Well, it is possible you don't want to kill this innocuous liquor patron, but you also don't want to get shot during a duel yourself. Well, did you know that you can actually disarm poor old Petey there? And not only will you win the duel, but you'll gain more morality points for doing so in a non-lethal way. I know, super cool, right? Another neat little secret is fast travel actually exists outside of paying for coaches and trains. However, you will have to upgrade Arthur's tent in the camp ledger to access it, or you'll have to beat the game. This world is pretty big, so it can be nice to quickly get somewhere every now and again. It isn't the end of the world, however, to not have fast travel as the world space is simply breathtaking. Literally, I actually forgot to breathe a couple times. Lucky for me, my goldfish knows CPR and is always looking for any excuse to make out with me. <laughs> He's a bit of a creeper, that fish. Now do note that you only get one chance to do certain side missions, so you don't want to miss out. The main missions as you're playing the story are highlighted in yellow. However, the side missions are highlighted in white. Now, if you don't do the side missions when you have a chance, you actually won't get another chance to do them once you progress far enough in the story. So be sure to take your time and do all the side missions you can while you're playing through the story. Now, if you're robbing a train, you can actually have your horse follow alongside for a quick getaway. Just whistle for it when you get on the train and it will follow you to the end of the planet. That's loyalty right there. Unlike when you leave your wife alone for 10 minutes and come home to find her balls deep in the neighbor's boy. You broke my heart, Dolores. You broke my heart. Now here's another something you might not know, but holding down on the D-pad lets you have quick access to radar options. Expand it, make it normal, put the compass on or off. Your choice. Oh, and if those choices don't make you harden your britches, I don't know what would. Am I right, fellas? Am I right? No? Okay, well, I guess I'm the weirdo then, because it made me a bit horny, okay? And finally, you can actually antagonize random people into a duel by walking up to them, antagonizing them, and then putting yourself in the duel dead eye by slowly pressing down on the trigger. This will prompt them to also go for their gun, and there you have it, you can actually duel anyone who's willing to fight you. Now, I hope you enjoyed all 50 of these tips, and hopefully, you'll find them helpful. Now, thanks again for watching, folks, and I hope you did enjoy this video, and if you did, be sure to dry hump that subscribe button and come back for more fun next time. And if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy will come and tickle your butthole. Now, I hope to see you all again in the next one, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby!